Hi, and good morning. I'm Chris. And I'm Janine, and welcome to the Blue Fiber Tree. <clears throat> Yay. Um, so this one did a good job last time. You got to see her. You got to see my very messy studio. It didn't look messy. Oh, that was messy. That was very. We're very organized in there now. Are you and, sure? Well, more so than we've ever been. <laughs> But yeah, that was the what they saw was the aftermath of getting ready for Wild and Wooly. I thought it was before. Well, like like so, the studio was what it looked like after we finished getting our stuff ready for oh, Wild and Wooly. Oh, I gotcha. So it was a little discombobulated and not quite put together, but you know that's okay. Yeah, Wild and Wooly was fun. We had a great time. I know they had record numbers again this year, but I think across the board everybody had lower sales. And I'm wondering if it's just because there was, we were maxed out with vendors and everybody was spreading their love across everybody else. I don't, I don't know. know. I did really close to last year. Did you? I did. Well, that's I did. good. I was just a tiny, tiny, tiny bit. bit under, um, but I had different stuff there this year than you what did. I did. I had balls of wool. And your setup was which totally different. We sold a ton of the mm -hmm. balls of wool, so I'm real glad we brought that. Nice, yeah. awesome. People liked Marino. <laughs> I didn't get to walk around except to go to the bathroom one time, and that was it. So, I peed before, <laughs> and I walked around at the very end mm -hmm. and saw Dave and looked at Laura and went, I need to buy stuff. And she goes, don't buy stuff. We'll switch. Oh, yeah. Okay. And that's that's the bartering that's system is in full swing between yes. the vendors. Yes. And somewhere <laughs> I have hair clips. I got to find my bag from Wild and Wooly. I have hair clips from Flora. Oh, okay. Yeah, to keep my little bangs out of my face while I'm working because they're just cool. Mm -hmm. Get in your way. Yeah. Yep. So you got the schedule? I do have the schedule. And Look at all this fun stuff. Oh my God. March is needle felting. Needle they felting. They tend to do that though. Every there once tends, in a while. There tends to be like a month yeah. of macrame, a month of this, a month yeah. of spinning. So, yes, we do have those things sprinkled in there, but most of it is needle felting. And on the 6th, which is a Wednesday from 5 to 8, is basic needle felting. So you're going to take a ball of coral and your felting tools, and we're going to make balls and cones. So the basic needle felting is three-dimensional. Yes. So you're going to make circles. You're going to make things that you're going to hold in your hand. Um, and once you get those basic shapes, you can do a bumblebee. Um, you can do a panda bear. This is one of the Ashford kits. There ask. are several. Okay. Um, yeah, you can do anything. And that is going to, um, it's a great way if you've never done it and you don't want to take time in one of our other workshops it is for beginners but if you want to get a class under your belt where you actually know how to use the tools why we do what we do you know just kind of get those basics down it's going to help you with any other needle felting it's really really helpful because it, yeah. it just it's not really helps you learn how to get a solid base which i wasn't originally taught right we weren't and our stuff was super squishy like and this it was guy. like some of my stuff kind of goes like this. I get the Leaning Tower of Pisa with some of my old right. melting stuff. So the Ashford kits are a little fluffier. Yeah. They're not so firm. Whereas this guy, I can hardly squeeze him. You can mount him. Yeah. Kind of. So it's it's what we learned later in other yeah. workshops. Oh, absolutely. Um, so, yeah. So um, it's a great basic, let's do this and get you on your way. Absolutely. I don't and think I have any classes where you have to have a beginner's needle felting workshop to take any other workshops that we have no, offer. No, but it's, I still think it's a nice way, even before you take one of the other workshops. Yeah, just to get the basics down. To get, well, it kind of puts you a step ahead so mm -hmm. that when you come to the class, you're not learning for the first time. You can actually really work right. on the project. And you might only stab yourself once instead of three times. Band-Aids are here. Yes, I have a first aid kit. It works. Yes. So there's that on the 6th. On the 9th, from 10 to 1, I figured it out. Oh, no. You got your little... Ha, <laughs> ha. Took me a minute, but I figured it out. Those are not easy. They're not. It's but not. It's well, a lot it's, quicker than you think. Once you start it, like, once you understand, because you designed it. 
I did. So once you're des- I'm like trying to figure out the design of something like that takes a hot minute. So I figured out the pedals. I couldn't figure out how to put it together. To put it together. <laughs> yeah. And I finally figured it out. So there you go. So this is on a Saturday the 9th from 10 to 1. You get enough materials to do three. Nice. So this is going to be a fun one. So it took me a minute, but I got it. Um, on the 13th, we have Regina's first workshop in the store. Yeah, so she's going to be doing some needle felting. And her first project is actually Easter eggs because Easter is coming up here soon. That's going to be so much And fun. she just did, so you have a bunch of plain ones that have just the color on them and they need to be decorated. And then you can do like a flower. This one has a flower. It just has some lights. And a, bum, a butterfly on it. So you can do anything you want. Oh, and this just want. has a variegation of color. Right. I love it. This is one of those basic shapes that they te- teach you in the beginners. Mm-hmm. Isn't that fun? I like the polka dot one. Right. You are required to have your own tools for this. So if you don't have them yet, you can get them here. Um, a needle felting tool and a piece of foam to work on. Once you do this, you can do something like this. She tossed these in there with these, the little chick and the, <laughs> and the rabbit. They're cute. Color so, two little teeth. Right. So, you know, they're simple, but they're fun. No. And you can make a bunch of them, and Hand they're down. very basic. Um, so, yes, you don't need to have anything prior experience. <clears throat> So this is a great way to learn how to do it as well. Absolutely. That's a lot of fun. That same evening from 5.30 to 8 or 7.30, probably 7.30, I've got just the basic knots workshop. So we take some of our craft cord and I teach you just the knots. So the difference between basic knots for macrame and beginner's macrame is in beginner's macrame we actually make this piece in the basic knots you just learn how to do the knots you learn how to do the knots at the same time when you do this piece so if you're going to do this you can do the basic knots but you're going to end up repeating all of that when you do this so if you are thinking about doing macrame just do this one it's easier. Yeah, like if you want the project. Just pay for the project. Just pay for it once. Right. And, you know, the thing with the... I found a lot of people who take basic knots are people that really don't want to necessarily learn the wall mm-hmm. hangings. They want to do it so they can do other projects like the coasters or the project bags, the lanterns, things like that that are just yeah, the not sun. a flat... Yeah. Piece. Um, and it does help um, if you do take those other workshops that don't require any previous experience. Um, it just helps you. You already know that square knot. You know the double half hitch. You, yep. you know, you've already kind of, your hands are kind of doing that already. So yep. it's really and fun. I'll, I'll be honest. Most macrame pieces are done with square knots and double half hitches. Yep. Very rarely do you get into all the other knots that you've right. learned. Right. Like, there's a, it's those, when it's decorative. They're right. decorative. The rest of the knots are decorative, I feel. Yep. You've got those two under your belt. You can do just about anything. Absolutely. So, yeah. So, that is the 13th from 530 to 8. On the 15th, we have beginner spinning from we 5 do. to 8. We do. Hold on. My eye is watering for the 95th time today. The Thank second session will be the 29th at the same time. So, you... Okay. Beginner spin. We learn how to take lovely wool and make lovely yarn. So in the first session, we go over pretty much the basics of your wheel, how to draft, how to get control of that fiber. Um, A lot of people like will start with thinner sections of roving to help you learn how to draft. Because for most people, you're not going to come in to a section of fiber and just immediately be able to draft. That takes time to learn how to mm-hmm. hold the whole bundle and spin yarn from this. Yeah. Um, so we break it down. Um, you know, a lot of you who've taken 
the class with me, know that you're going to hear slow your feet <laughs> an awful lot through the class. I should literally just have it on some little button that's recorded. I just hit the button every 30 seconds. Slow your feet. Slow down. Slow your feet. A lot of people get a little... They want to ride it like a bike. They want, they want to pedal right, really, right. really fast. And I was one of those people, so I completely understand it. You can go fast when you're flying, but it's right. still but you have to have You have a, to have control. Yeah. And then, again, this is another. And it's just, this is just basic spinning. And, guys, you're not going to have anything that's perfect. You're oh, learning no. a technique. Oh, my Lord. And you can see use our spinning wheels. We do not want you to go out and invest money in something that you honestly are going to hate because right you may not like it right and some people absolutely love it and yeah. it's not for some people my friend laura it's not for her at all nope she's like don't ever put me on one of those wheels ever again yep. it's like i don't need to make my own yarn i can buy it off the wall yeah you yeah. know and a conversation that i had with a gentleman not too long ago um he's going to be taking i think our beginning spin in april he goes and I'm, I'm going to have to say it don't, with an accent. Too I have to because I love the way he talks. I love how I love his accent. And I'm never going to be able to say his name. Nope. But um, this gentleman, he's from France. And he's so charming. And he said, he goes, so I have a question for you. <laughs> and I was like, okay. He goes, so I hear there's homework. And I went, oh, yeah, there's homework. And he goes, I'm so, there's homework, and I do not have a wheel. <laughs> and I went, oh, you don't need a wheel. You can go to the store in between the first session and the second session and use one of the wheels at the store to do your work. Yep. And, oh, thank God. He was so funny. This, he was like, okay, because, you know, the wheels, they're expensive. I was like. They can be, but don't worry, we got you covered. Mm -hmm. So you just basically in between the first and second session, you'll call up Janine and say, hey, I want to come in today and use a wheel. Is there one available? And she'll let you know if there's 17,000 yep. other people using the wheels. Mm -hmm. Oh, my God, I have fiber in my eye. I'm going to lose it. It hurts. Oh, maybe I got it. There we go. Oh, listen. I was wondering this if we were going to have to pause. Yeah, <laughs> we might have to pause. No, that does not feel good when it gets in your eye. But yeah, so, you know, a lot of people's concern is, okay, if there's homework, how, how am I, I going to do it? So, yeah, um, especially if you don't have a wheel, like I said, some people already have a wheel that they've been gifted or whatever, and they just want to know how to use it. So yep. they can do their homework at home. But if you have a problem, you need to actually, you can, you can come back into the store and I can help you with any yeah. of your techniques or if she's in the store, she can help you. And no, we're not doing drop spin. Stop it. I can't walk and chew bubblegum at the same time. Do you think I'm going to be able to drop spindle? So here's the thing with drop spindle. Once you've learned how to spin on a wheel, it's so slow. Yeah. Because you start and you stop and you start and you stop and you start and you stop. So there is a lady um, that I dye fiber for that teaches at all the different fiber shows mm -hmm. drop spindling. And um, Cynthia, I, I know for sure, I think she's at two of the shows that I go to. Um, I may actually take one of her classes at some point mm -hmm. just to say I did it. Just so I can you go. have a drop spindle, don't you? No, I've bought drop spindles oh, to wait, give as gifts. But you don't have oh, no, one. I haven't. No, no, I, I have no, have no. One either. No, no. Oh, dear Lord, no. So I, I, I might do that because I mean I do already know how to draft and it can't be drafting can't be that different it's the matter of how do I hold all the stuff that I need to make this go like this and this do that I don't know but um, it wouldn't be a bad thing to take a class just so mm -hmm. that I can answer people's questions who come to me that have been mm -hmm. you know oh I've I do the drop spindle so I should be able to do a wheel and I just giggle because it well, the only thing that they have an advantage of if they've learned how to drop spindle first is they understand the drafting technique. Yep. Which really helps when you oh, transfer it, it to it helps, a wheel. but for some reason, my drop spindle people are the people that I literally want to go, like, put my hands on their knees to slow down their feet. I, I... Yeah, because 
the so the spindle is goes fast. super fast just to keep that torque. Whereas your feet are doing that right. torque. Right. But they are my ones. They are my ones that can spin thinner to begin right. with. Right. Because they're already used to it. Yep. So and then typically you're going to do something very thin on a drop spindle. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. But yeah. So, so that's beginner spinning. Yep. Second session we teach you how to ply. I didn't say that. Correct. But, and we'll wash and set your yarn. Yes. So that you learn how to do that. Yep. So the the homework is to make sure that you have enough singles to do the second session of plying. Yes. Um, and then one more date. Uh, the 16th is Rigid Huddle <laughs> Basics from 10 to 4. And I only have one spot left. Girl, you're going to have to offer that more than once a month. All right. This is run out of weekend. You, okay. <laughs> so you're going to have to find a daytime class. <laughs> you're going to have to figure it out. People want to take Rigid Huddle. Which is great, tell you. but you can always call me and say, hey, your class is full. I don't want to wait till April, which the next April session is the 27th. I don't want to wait that long. Um, and I'll go, okay, well, do you have time available during the week? And all I need is like five to six hours of your time. That's it. That's all, all I need is five to six hours. No big deal. It's more your time than my time because I spend the first hour to an hour and a half getting you started. And then you weave for the next three to four hours, and then I show you how to get it off. The and stop and ask room. questions when you have a question. Right, yeah. right. Take a break. Get up. Walk around. Hey, how you doing? I walk around and I go, doing okay. Yep. That's okay. the biggest part. Is like, have you stood up? Yes. Because so many people, once you get weaving, it's very cathartic. Yeah. And you just sit there and you're like weaving and the time passes by and you're relaxed and you're weaving and all of a sudden three hours goes by and you haven't stood up to walk, you haven't peed, you haven't had anything to drink, you forget your water is sitting next to you. And we're like, okay, you need to hydrate, you need to walk, you need to go pee. Please, like, please at least stand up and give your knees and hips a chance to <laughs> to straighten out. Because you don't bit. realize sitting for that long, like Yeah, you don't even realize it. No. I do it here in the store. If I'm by myself, or next thing you know, if I'm involved in something, um, like I say, two to three hours go by, and it's like, I need to get up, and it's like, oh, my hips don't want to move. So, yeah. So, I try to make sure that everybody gets up and moves around as well. Absolutely. So, that's Absolutely. it for the calendar through the 16th. Now, we went further than the, the next two weeks, video, just... but I just want to have more to explain to you. Yeah. yeah. If, if you guys see this little guy right here. So he's so cute. We are going to be doing a fundraiser for the Alzheimer's Longest Day again this year. We didn't do it last year. Um, when we did it two years ago, Regina did it for her mom. Well, her mom passed away last year. And so we didn't do anything last year because it was still too raw for her. Yeah. But we've decided we're going to do it again this year. And we are going to do these needle felted mushrooms on a four inch felting disc and Regina will be teaching this twice on June 21st so mark your calendars um, it is the longest day and 100% of the proceeds are going to be going to the Alzheimer's Association so we haven't worked out all the kinks yet I'm pretty sure we have an idea of what we're going to be charging you're providing all the fiber I am um, I've got the disc and we will um, We'll have fun with that because for some reason, mushrooms are very popular this year. And if you turn this around, so you have a family of three, we're going to be showing you how to do the medium size one that day. And you can stay as long as you want. We're going to do an 11, an 11 to 2 and a 4 to 7 session. But you can come and hang out all day, do whatever you want, and um, we can help you get through it. But these are fun. They're nice. I They're wish firm. felting didn't hurt my hands because I yeah. really like those mushrooms. So needle felting sometimes because a lot of people go, you know, when I knit or crochet, it really hurts my hand. The carpal tunnel. Well, when you're knitting and crocheting, you're constantly doing something mm -hmm. like this. When you're needle felting, it's your arm that's moving. But it's the squeezing motion I, that gets hurt. It's the squeezing. I can't. Anything that I have to hold like a pen yeah. for longer than five minutes, forget it. Yeah. That's why I don't do a ton of highlights anymore because yeah. that motion is really yeah. difficult. So that's it for me for the calendar. Okay. Um, I'm going to go over some stuff too. Yeah, Chris is going to go over some things you guys have been asking for her die schedule. Well, guess what? She's got it up on her website and her Facebook page. Yep. 
and she's going to go over those dates. Yep, and I'm just going to go through them really, really quick. Um, all of the classes, the basic classes that I offer, I'm offering twice mm -hmm. in the summer, and then there is one class that is only happening once, mm -hmm. and that is my Try and Die workshop. Um, if you want to be a part of the Try and Die workshop, which is where we weave on a three and a half, four foot triangle loom, continuous strand weaving. We weave with all natural mm -hmm. yarns. Um, I have spun some art yarn that I give to everybody for that day. Um, you need to get in to call Janine and take the basic tri loom workshop so that you have that because there's not enough time in that day for me to teach you how to continue a strand weave. Yeah, you really need to And then to also know how to take do the that. class. Yeah. Um, if you're somebody that already does know how, hey, great, bring it on. Um, but so starting on June 22nd, we have our intro to kettle dyeing where we do solids and tonals. On June 23rd, we have the variegated workshop. Pretty self-explanatory. We do variegated. Um, on the 29th of June, we have speckled yarns. And then on June 30th, we have dyeing roving the right way. Now, in my yarn classes, mm -hmm. stop laughing. I know what that's for. Stop laughing. Um, in all of the yarn classes, you do get five skeins of yarn, um, enough to do a sweater, do a large shawl. There's a lot of things you can accomplish with five skeins of yarn. Do they pick what weight they want? No, it's all sock weight. Unless we have set up, yeah, okay. I do all sock weight. Unless we have set up prior arrangements, like I have a guild coming in mm -hmm. in April, and we didn't necessarily pick weights. They wanted to work with multiple types of fibers to see how the dye picked up mm -hmm. so i have five different types of yarn which is fine with me as long as prior arrangements are made um cost is a little more because mm -hmm. some of the yarns cost me more um but all three yarn yarn dyeing classes those are 150 dollars. i do ask for a 50 dollars deposit to reserve your space um the roving class you get eight ounces and then i also give you an extra Two to three because I tend to pull extra little fibers for you to dye just to see how something takes like on Falkland compared to a straight merino or then a merino and a nylon. So I like to make sure that you see because what you get from different fibers is very, very different. Like mm -hmm. a Falkland may not take as bright and bold as something with a merino right. or a merino nylon blend. Um, and I like to see that everybody has those differences. Um, in July, on July 6th, is my try and die class. Um, we just, I just talked about that. Mm -hmm. um, and then July 15th, we have... Oh, oh so, but, okay, so she explained about the weaving part of that. How do we get them dyed? Oh, I'll teach you how to kettle dye them. <laughs> we're we're going to, it's like a, dye it's them. like a dip dye. It's yes. Fun. And, um, yeah, so... And for the for the triloom class, besides having the knowledge of how to weave on the triloom, you do not need any prior dye experience. We don't talk about how to mix anything. No. You tell me what colors you want, I get it mixed. So you're learning technique, you're not learning about the actual dyeing. Yep. Um, on July 15th, we have the intro to kettle dyeing, which is the solids and tonals. On the 21st, we have the variegated. And then August 4th is speckled, and August 10th is dying, roving the right way. And then that is it, because the next weekend I have a fiber show. Yeah, so <laughs> this is the in-between shows. Yeah, yeah, this is the in-between. I do most of my classes then. Um, I will take, like, special request classes outside of that throughout the year. I try not to teach in my barn um, pretty much December, January, February. February, because you guys won't like how cold it is in my barn. Mm -hmm. I mean, even with the insulation, and I do, heat. I do work out there, mm -hmm. but <laughs> you guys would like it just a tad bit warmer. <laughs> so March, April, I'm fine with that. November, I'm fine with that as well. It doesn't get as bitter cold no. in November here anymore. Um, uh, all classes, I have 10 spots available. Sometimes, depending on what technique we're doing, I can go up to 12. Um, I like to stay at 10 because it's a nice, even number. It doesn't make it too crowded in the studio. Spots have already started to fill. Um, my The Facebook page 
and my website, as I fill spots, I'm updating saying, oh, there's eight spots still available or nine spots still available. So as people are coming onto the list, I'm making sure all classes are from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. And once you sign up, I will be able to email you all the information you need to know about how to find me, what to bring, what to wear. Yeah. Um, basically, you are allowed to bring food and something to drink to my barn. Yep. Um, so everything's on my little sheet that's on there. Um, also, with um, it pertaining to, like, the, I told you there's enough quantity of yarn to make a sweater. Mm -hmm. If you go to my Facebook page, I have kept a post pinned on why to take one of my dye classes. And this lovely lady, Michelle, that took one of my classes this past summer, last year, mm -hmm. um, she made a sweater out of everything that she dyed. She was kind enough to share with me pictures of the sweater, pictures that she took throughout the class of her yarn, of the kettle while she was dying. And you can go and see, like, wow, she's a beginner and she made this? Well, that's because we go into great detail on how to get those colorways. Yeah, and what is it you're planning on? If you already know what you're going to make, it's easier to figure out how to dye it, mm -hmm. basically. Mm -hmm. And Mich I've seen that sweater. It is beautiful. She did a beautiful <laughs> job. And she was like, when I saw her, she was like, so the color ran a little. I was like, yeah, yeah. And as a first-time dyer, like, when I'm telling you to rinse, 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 <laughs> or don't be so heavy-handed with dye, because if you're really heavy-handed with dye, and then you don't rinse, 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 and you're not setting it properly, because maybe you get a little sidetracked talking to the other people in mm -hmm. class, yeah, your yarns are going to bleed. Every first-time dyer has the issues, and I'll be very honest, I've been dying for quite a while, and every once in a while, I get a yarn that just won't let go, or I get a fiber that just won't let go of a color, and sometimes it's time, sometimes it's temperature, sometimes it's, I was accidentally heavy-handed, and when you're in the act of it, you don't actually know right. what it was that caused it well because you're not just doing one no you're doing a bunch oh, well, i'm doing like 90 skeins at a time yes, i swear red <gasps> red <laughs> and if it's rhodamine red from pro chem just hold on to your hat folks <clears throat> very little he has very little <laughs> very little and very little magenta yes the hot fuchsias and the magentas for some strange reason they just love to bleed and your fiber is still very bright and with the intensity that you had in mind yep it just won't rinse out yep so i was reading on one of the dyer i'm, I'm always on my indie dyer group mm -hmm. on facebook <clears throat> and some of them are like professional indie dyers some are just indie dyers at home and don't sell their stuff but there's lots of information some of it good some of it not so good some of it a little scary but somebody commented the other day and was asking Hi, I've dyed X, Y, Z. And no matter what I do, it is still bleeding. I don't know how to fix this. So somebody suggested to this person, and, and it's, in theory, it's the correct answer. Okay. Okay. They told her to put it back in a soap and acid bath mm -hmm. and reheat it. Okay. Wool. What's your yarn made out of? Is it wool? Is it super washed wool? Is it like... Does it have any nylon in it? Is it alpaca? What's in there? So, like, is it going to felt if I go from hot to cold again? Like, you have to be very careful. If you're putting it in a cold water bath and you're going to bring it to temperature slowly to get it to release some of that dye, sure. But be very clear that you can't just take your yarn that's been washed and it's now room temperature and go like that in a kettle of hot acid wash because you're going to felt some of your fibers if you go from room temperature to hot after already having been hot and cooled down. Now, super wash yarns are a little more forgiving. Right. I... I think I have yet to felt a super wash wool. 
and I've done some pretty horrible things to to yarn at times. <laughs> but if we were working with something like this, now this is a super wash, okay? It, it it's it's a merino. However, you can look at it and see what that yarn actually looks like, that halo that's on there, this will felt. I don't care that this is super wash. If I did that little trick to this, as a, we could we could do we could do this with it later. It's a single. Yeah. So singles you have to watch. Right. So <laughs> if any of you take the dye class and then get oh, I'm gonna go join one of these indie dyer groups on Facebook and learn some more. Yay great, full of wonderful information. But if you ask a question and it gets answered, ask them to clarify. Ask to be very detailed in getting your answers. Yeah. And then if you still have questions, email or text me. Yeah, and the thing is, it's sometimes there's, you wouldn't even think to ask those questions. No. So. And the problem is, is when you've got newbie versus, uh, there are people who have been dying for 20 years in that group, and they think the way that I do things is wrong. Yeah. And that's okay. But you don't know who those people are and who you're getting the advice from. Right. So it's kind of it's kind of funny. Yeah. But so anyway, those are our classes. Sorry, it was long-winded. Um, I'll put a list of the classes down below um, underneath the long tail knit schedule. You'll also find it on my website. You'll also find it on the Facebook. But it is there, and it does tell you how to reach me to sign up for classes. Yep. They will go fast. Yep. So... That's it for the schedule and her schedule. Now, real quick. Yeah. Because we're probably getting up there in time. Um, changes that are going to be happening with the things that you provide here in the store, your yarns. So just go over briefly what's going to be happening. Yep. That everybody will see <clears throat> tomorrow. Will yeah. We'll see it on Monday. Oh, yeah. Tomorrow. Available on Monday. So this is going to happen today here in the store. Yep. And, um, yes. I'm... So, a um, couple of things. So, very hard for Chris to keep up with eight lines here and eight lines there. Like, trying to do all the knit shop yarns and then all of the show yarns is a little bit too much and Chris got to have a nervous breakdown. So, to make, life, <laughs> to make life easy and then also so that Janine has current stock. Mm -hmm. um, it's a win-win for both of us. Um, we are pulling... All of the alchemy yarns that are currently in Janine's store. Except? Except for the min the minis. The sock minis. Yes. Yeah. Sock those. minis. The ion sock minis are staying. We love those. We're fine with those. Everything else is coming out. Um, you'll find those on our discontinued racket shows. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so if there's something you're looking for that you had and you're like, oh crap, I need a yarn, call Janine, text Contact me, her. go yeah. through Facebook, find me. You know how to find me. I'm not that hard to find. Um, we will have those over at the shows over the next few months. Um, but we are bringing in new yarns. Um, we do still have a basic sock yarn mm -hmm. that is a 75-25 blend. We have a DK yarn that is a 75-25 blend. We also have a wonderful um, merino silk blend that is one of the softest yarns in the world. Um, we have a beautiful BFL. Uh, there's something else I'm forgetting. Any of these? No, it's on my other page over there, and I didn't grab both pages. Okay. Um, there's one more yarn that's escaping me at the, off the top of my head. Oh, we have a sparkle. Ha! There we go. We have a sparkle sock. Um, but then we have two chunkier yarns that oh, wait, I brought. Wait, wait, wait. Is the sparkle sock different than the sparkle sock we have? It is. Oh, okay. It's a different sparkle sock. Perfect. Yeah. Little, just a little bit different. It mm -hmm. has... Like, the amount of sparkle is a little different. Okay. Like, it's, I, I don't think know, it's, it's not in your face. It's yeah. A, it's a softer... Because one of those has a, you can definitely a lot less cut. sparkle than the other one. Yeah, so it's probably in between those two. Okay. Um, but then we have two that are, like, considered bulky yarns mm -hmm. that are good to put them in. That'll help with our weavers, crocheters who like nice. to use thicker yarns. Um, one of them, it's my ASO. Right now they are in 50 gram balls. This is only 38 yards, but it is a nice chunky fat single. And they are all variegated. Um, so this is how it's going to be? This is how it's going to be temporarily. Okay. 
um, kind of, this is like an introduction of that because probably come April, there'll be full skeins gotcha. of it. So that is my ASO line. And then something that people love is the Malabrigo Caracol. Caracol. I can never remember that term. Yarns. These are very similar to that. This is my ESO line of product. They're it not is as bulky as the Caracol. No. And they do plump up a little after mm -hmm. you've set them. It's not as bulky, but it is still a bulky yarn. And it's got that lovely, um, kind of that bubble crepe effect that for those that spin and have spun bubble crepe, um, makes like a stained glass effect. Um, you can see it better on that one. Yep, that's what I'm getting ready to grab. It's that black. It's the way it crisscrosses and everything. It, it gives it that impression of stained glass. And they're beautiful. Is it pretty? It's squishy. It's fun. It This crochets beautifully. Knits wonderfully. This is not something that you are going to use when you want to make a project that has a lot of drape okay this is a heavy well, yeah because it's not going to be able to drape no it there's it's not a drapey yarn <clears throat> this is a great hat glove you can make some beautiful sweaters that if you just want a regular sweater not some fine thin thing that has great drape um this is awesome for weaving it it, it does wonderful crocheted up um i had a lady that did um she actually crocheted her own pot holders with it. She goes because it was so thick. Mm -hmm. It made great pot holders. So does a lot of stuff. <clears throat> it's really reasonably priced, but these will all be available come Monday. And then about every six to eight weeks, Sue and I will bring our little happy tail ends in here and we'll be swapping out colorways. Um, in all of the regular yarns, this, we're putting an awful lot of this in here, so we probably will not be swapping this out as often. This is probably more of every three months mm -hmm. that we'll be swapping the colorways out. Mm -hmm. um, but we'll be swapping colorways out in the lines so that you get refreshed and have more choices. So the whole point of that statement is, if you see something you like, you better grab it while you can, because it might, might not, not be here either. long. <laughs> <laughs> but that way it gives us the opportunity to dye more and her the opportunity to have more colorways to offer. Because it's hard to put 20 plus colors in every line and only yeah. have five cell. It's just hard. That's yeah. hard to keep up with. So the whole point is we're going to be changing it up and refreshing colorways in stock every six to eight weeks. And if there's something that you like, you better... Grab it while you Better can. Grab it while you can. And if you need more, let me know and we'll figure it out. Yeah, and as always, like if you if you see a colorway and there's only two skeins and you need six, don't buy those two. Let Janine know you need six yeah. and we'll dye six of that colorway because you want them, you really want them to be within the same dye lot because when I tell you that time, temperature, the weather outside, the amount of chlorine in the water, so many things change. I, we have this colorway called Metathesis, and it's like an olive, beautiful, okay. deep olive. And, you know, I dyed it in September, and it was one color. I dyed it in November, at the end of November, and it was a very different color. Humidity has probably has a lot to do with it. A lot around. to do with it. So I did a little over dyeing to get the depth of shade that I had. The first time around, thank God, I knew what it was supposed to look like. But um, so yeah, you definitely want things within the same, yeah, within the same batch. All righty. But that is it. So a lot of new happening. Absolutely, here in the stores lots and of changes. Fun. We've been moving things around and doing some things. So if you haven't been here for a while, stop in and take a look at everything. Now today is also an instructional video, and I've got you covered with some knitting. I'm going to show you why we do yarn overs and how to do them between knitting and purling. That's Yay. how we make lace. That's how we make lace. I love lace. Holes on purpose. I like that. Yep, we'll talk more about that in the instructional Perfect. video.
We'll see you guys later. Like, subscribe, share with your friends. We really appreciate you guys. Yep. And we'll see you soon. All right. Bye. Take care. Bye. Alrighty, so we are going to demonstrate uh, yarn overs in knitting and how to do it between the knit and the purls. Because um, purls were very confusing. Yarn overs and purls were very confusing to me, but once I figured it out, it's like, okay. And sometimes I have to do the, you got to do this first. So this piece actually shows where... Those yarn overs, knit two togethers, SSKs are going to come into play because it actually creates a nice lacy decorative pattern. So that's how you get all of this fun stuff happening. And once you know how to do those, it's patterns are easy. It's just yarn overs, lace work, it's holes on purpose in specific places to create designs that it. it's no more complicated than that um, people look at the charts and they go oh you know I really don't want to do this all right so what we've got here is I've got worsted weight yarn um, I have 14 stitches I knit a few rows just so I could have a base and I'm going to show you what I'm going to do here so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to knit one and then I'm going to show you how we do this. So yarn overs create extra stitches so they're a great great way to add an extra stitch if you want a hole. It's not great if you don't want a hole to increase a stitch. But in lace work we want that hole. But you want to keep your stitch count the same. So without increasing our stitch count that's why you have the decrease stitches to go with it, like the knit two together, the purl two together. So to yarn over the yarns in the back, yarning over is just bringing it to the front and back over the needle to the back, and then I'm going to immediately knit two together. I still have my same stitch count. Yarn over, knit two together. Yarn over, knit two together. And I'm going to do this to the end of the row. And then I have three stitches left. That's my last knit two together. And then I'm going to knit one. So what you're going to see is yarn overs put it down here you can see this better yarn overs knit two together but I still have 14 stitches two four six eight ten twelve fourteen okay so I'm going to turn this and I am going to purl all the way back I'm going to purl the yarn overs when I come to them so this is here's a yarn over so it kind of looks like a mistake, but really it's not. So you want to come in and just treat it like a stitch and pull it off. And what happens is when you go back to the other side, that yarn over is locked in with the wrong side row, which is typically purl. Now sometimes your lace patterns will have you doing lace work on both sides of your knitting and that's great but as a beginner if you're learning how to do lace I would not pick a pattern like that for your first one all right so there we go I'm going to turn this around and you can see that all those lace those yarn overs are all locked in with the purl stitch okay so now I'm going to show you how to do this with purl stitches so I'm going to knit one, I'm going to yarn over because I'm going to keep my yarn over stacked on top of each other, and then I need to purl two together. Well, yes, my yarn is in the front, but if I don't go behind and bring it forward again, I won't have a yarn over. So if you just do this, 
you're going to knit two together or purl two together but in order to get the yarn over you have to do that extra wrap to bring your yarn back to the front okay so then purl two together right now that your yarns in the front all you have to do is around and to the front and then you can do it it's that first yarn over from knitting to the purl side that you have to do that additional pull the yarn to, to the front to make sure that you have the yarn over and the purls okay yarn over purl two together yarn over purl two together and now I want to knit my last stitch so I need to move it between the needles to the back in order to knit it so now you have the yarn overs and the purls so I switch this around and I'm going to purl back because this is the wrong side row I just wanted to show you the purls how you do the purl two together so in essence when you're doing yarn overs that first wrap on the purl side you just have to think okay I've yarned it over but my yarn is sitting in the back and I need to bring it to the front so you need to move it between the needles in essence it's almost like you're doing an additional wrap so I'm going to show that just one more time because <clears throat> that's a little more confusing so I've got a knit stitch I'm going to yarn over but I need to purl so you need to move it to the front so you can purl and that's basically it and you get that nice lacy look <clears throat> excuse me and then it's the combination of how you do the your knits and purls and your yarn overs that is going to give you all this fun decorative patterns okay so if you have any questions leave them in the comments below hopefully this clears up the yarn overs knit two togethers and yarn over purl two togethers in knitting have a great day.